Hi, this is Crystal with Girl Meets Kingdom. I'm sorry I have been away for a little while and I'm actually going to touch on that in this video. Um, but the title of this video will be Distractions of Marriage. Um, I know a lot of my single sisters, while they're single, they're distracted by marriage. They're distracted by the thought of marriage, the thought of when will this happen for me? What is going to be like? Who is it? How do I prepare? What, you know, are we going to do together purpose wise? What will it look like? Just so many things cause distraction. But what seems to have us women in a chokehold it's the distraction of marriage. And not only are women distracted by marriage while being single, but also while marriage. And I have definitely fallen victim to being married and distracted by my marriage. And what? why is it such a big deal that you're distracted with your marriage? Isn't that a good thing? It is, but when it distracts you from what the Lord wants you to do, what the Lord is calling you to do, um, your purpose, the reason you got married, then it is a problem. And it's just another tactic of the enemy. But I'm not going to even put all the blame on the enemy. A lot of times we quickly shift the blame to the enemy so we don't have to take accountability when it's really just us walking in the flesh and not the spirit. So, again, the title of this video is distractions of marriage. Um, and I'm just going to touch on how marriage can be a distraction to you while you're single and how marriage has been a distraction um, being married. And I'm going to talk about my favorite scripture. Um, it's in Matthew 6. And it's, it's really just what you need to live your life by. If you live your life by this scripture, then everything will fall into place. And the will of God will happen for your life. You will be in alignment. This is you completely trusting in the Lord. And he will get you to the destination he has for you. And so I'm going to start with prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for just allowing me to have this opportunity, allowing me to have a platform to just speak a word and glorify your name and hopefully touch um, some women and help them navigate where they are and ultimately push them closer to you, introduce people that don't know you to you and reintroduce people to you that have gone astray, Lord. We thank you for your grace and mercy and kindness. We thank you for being so forgiven, Lord, because we do not deserve it. We do not deserve it, but you keep on forgiving us. You keep on blessing us. You keep on realigning us. So we just want to say thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Amen. So what's been going on? So marriage has been going on. You all know my story. If you don't know my story, then go back and look at my videos married after the counterfeit. So you all know that I got married within about two months of meeting my husband. And that comes with a set of problems, just to be honest, because although you're walking to your best ability being led by God, sometimes I think, and when I say I think is because this is just kind of how I've been navigating through just everything um, I'm going through, but I think, and a lot of you probably can relate, is when we feel like something is God, um, no matter if it's related to marriage, it could be work, it could be home, it could be um, opportunities. It could be related to our children. It could be related to traveling. It could be related to health. It could be related to food. It could be related to family, whatever. But sometimes we forget that just because it's God or we feel that it's God, that it's going to be flawless, that it's going to be smooth, 
everything is just going to fall into place. And mistakenly, we sometimes think we don't have to do much work or if any work. We think things are just going to fall into place just because God says, just because God says, this is me. Just like he made the creation, the world, man, the animals, everything. He said, and this is good. And this is good. But just because he says, and this is good, does not mean that what's good does not have a part to play. And I feel like sometimes when it comes to marriage, um, even before marriage, but we think that this is good, then everything's going to be good. And when it's not, <laughs> you're kind of stuck with, well, hold up now. Is, is this really you? Did I make a mistake? It's kind of hard to navigate. And so one thing that I feel like was an awakening <laughs> for me is the amount of work. Like me thinking, okay, I know it's crazy that I got married after two meet after two months of meeting someone. But I prayed, I felt strongly led that this was God. So it's going to work out. He going to work it out. Everything will fall into place. Sorry about that. I received a call from my husband. Okay, so trying to remember where I left off at. Um, you see that, okay, this is good, this is good. But the wake-up call was pretty much like, okay, Crystal, at the end of the day, you felt led that, you know, this was what you were supposed to do and not, you know, waste time and get married. But the fact still remains, you have only known this person for two months. <laughs> you have only known this person for two months. And so with that comes learning the person and adjusting to the person. And when you're just blindly trusting God, yeah, ultimately you have faith that this is going to work out. But it might not look how you envision something to look that's of God. So again, God, he knows the end from the beginning. So he's seeing the end picture. He's seeing where you're going to be here then when it's considered good. Because when he makes it, it might not really be good at that time. But he knows that eventually it's going to be good. The product, the finished product is going to be good. The thing is, you have to get there. And that means you have to work. And then you have to remember that since God the one that did it and you've been walking by God all this time, you have to continue to do it with God. When you decide that, oh, I got it. I'm good. I'm just going to handle this my way. That's when things are not going to look well. And you're going to really question, what did I get myself into? And so just the process of learning someone that you made such a huge commitment kind of reminds me of Mary at first sight when these people trusted um, these matchmakers and they made a huge commitment and got married at the altar their first time meeting the person. And so now they're having to work backwards because now you already made the commitment, you're married. Now you have to learn this person. And now it's not as easy as, oh, I don't like this person. I don't like what they do. Oh, I don't like this. I'm about to bounce. Now it's like you're forced to make it work, which honestly, it kind of works out better this way because it forces you to put in the work. It forces you to, when you realize that you can't do it by yourself, to call on God. It forces you to realize that just because you don't like this and that, it's not enough. You can't just walk away like if it's a boyfriend, girlfriend situation. And honestly, when we're just dating, and that's why no one in the Bible dated, like when you're just dating, I mean, honestly, you have so many, you have so much leverage. Like you have no limitations. You don't like the color that they're wearing. You don't like their hairstyle. You don't like something. You don't like um, a characteristic that they have or a trait. They're really, they're just immature. They'll outgrow. Like it's so much stuff that you 
don't have to put up with and you don't. And I feel like that's a reason why a lot of people are not getting married because during the dating, you're finding so much stuff you don't like and you're like, well, I'm not about to compromise. I'm not about to deal with that. The problem with me is what if that's actually the best person that God has for you? You're just going to have to work through that and adjust and over time that will get better. Like, you know, you grow and you mature. That's what happens. Certain how you act right now at 26 is not going to more than likely be how you act at 30. You're going to gain maturity. Certain things you do now that might irritate the crap out of somebody. As you age, as you get more developed, more mature, those things change. And so right now, if you're dating someone, you're seeing those things that you don't want to put up with when, you know, if you're 30, you're married, but it doesn't mean that that person's going to forever be like that. But I say all of that to say back to just working and navigating through um, when you <laughs> just decide to have a crazy story like me, um, you're working backwards. And so like you're learning this person and then you're also like you can't hide anything when you don't live together. I feel like things are so great <laughs> because you really can hide who you really are. You really can. You can show up for the four, eight hours, 10 hours, be with that person, be the great you. And then you go home and take off that costume. But when you're living together, when you're married, you can't take off that costume. Because if you do, the real you is going to be exposed. And so from being married, it's certain things that you learn about the person that you probably didn't know before living together right um and you might not like it then you have to think the environments we grew up in you know um if there's an age difference you have to consider that um just childhood like parenting if the parents were involved or it's so many variables and so it has definitely been a challenge um, as far as just adjusting to when you have your ideal of the person you want, or even, you know, a lot of us was under this kingdom, kingdom spouse deception, right? When we thought a certain person was going to be our spouse. And so that person, we probably already knew, already talked to, dated or whatever. And so we kind of had that as the standard, right? Cause that's who we really wanted. So that's who we have as the standard. And that's who we kind of thought this is who it's going to be. This is how this person is going to be. You already had it planned out during that long time you had the waiting on this person. So then that failed. And so you're now with the person that more than likely you was really supposed to be with. And it's not looking like how you thought the person you were going to be with or the person that God was seeing you would be. Right. You probably think you would get somebody that just came from the same walk as you environment, background, education, um, just lifestyle, just, and then when it's not that, it, it definitely takes some unlearning, right? And it takes some patience. And so when I talk about the distractions of marriage, those are the distractions I'm talking about. The distractions of getting to know who this person is that you were telling God, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. Lord, whatever you want for me, Lord, I'm ready. I take whatever. Use me, this, this, and that. And then it doesn't look exactly how you thought. Or it's just not measuring at the same level that you thought it would be. And it definitely caused you to be distracted. Because now I have to sit here and date this person that I'm married to. Right. I have to learn this person. I have to do all this type of stuff that you normally do before marriage. And it has definitely thrown me off when it comes to trying to figure out what exactly am I supposed to do purpose wise, like moving into the next level of my ministry, because my ministry has been Girl Meets Kingdom 
and it was really just journeying through um, my single season, me finding God, um, seeking first the kingdom of God is righteousness, and then all these other things be added. So it's allowing you all to take that journey with me, and hopefully you all will encounter the Lord like I did. And then you start seeking him first and allowing everything to fall into place as long as you're seeking him and he's your main focus. And so doing that, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not single now, but then I'm not a, a marriage expert. Right. Because I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still navigating through it. So I don't feel like I am qualified right now to give marital advice. Right. All I can do is just be honest about my marital experience. And so this has been just distracting, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, because, you know, I still work. I have my job. Um you know, I have my family and everything, but then also I have, I'm a wife now, you know, I'm a wife now. And it's certain things um, that God expects of me, right? But it just looks different when you do it this way. So I know that makes you all wonder, well, do you recommend getting married so soon? Well, if you don't get married <laughs> soon, if God tells you this is who and I don't want to say tell you because people might have different thoughts of God telling you but let's just say the Holy Spirit leads you like you're for sure it's the Holy Spirit leading you that this person is your the person you're supposed to be with well if there's no dating in the Bible how can we sit here and say okay that's your husband that's your wife so now you're supposed to just date. Like, I can't tell you that because that's not biblical. I don't have not one example of someone that dated. The only example I can think of of when someone was introduced to their um, husband or their wife and they did not instantly get married was Esther and King Xerxes or Ruth and Boaz. But they still they did not date during that time. They had an encounter with that person that they knew that it was a possibility, a great possibility that would be their husband, right? But they did not date. It was an encounter and then they went about their way, right? Doing what they were supposed to do and in God's timing, he brought it together. So that definitely can happen that there can be an encounter. You can meet the person that you ultimately will marry, but when you meet that person, I cannot tell you that you supposed to date or court that person. Like, yeah, I get that you're supposed to get to, you can get to know that person. I'm talking about dating, right? Um, Cause dating, I mean, I think dating and courting is like the same thing. You know, I, I feel like courting is better than dating though. Um, but it's kind of really the same thing. Um, but I understand you have to get, I'm not saying you meet the person and then you get married. I'm saying having this long drawn out period of time where you're dating. I don't see that in the Bible. I honestly, if we're just going off of the Bible. You just have to seek the Lord and pray and ask for his will to be done. And if it's his will, it will be done. And you move according to how he tells you to move. If it's not the timing right now, then it's not the timing. You take a step back. You continue to follow God and make sure you're in alignment and God will bring it together. Now, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you all it's a situation like this kingdom spouse deception where it's a person you like, that's that's my husband. That's my husband. And then it's been years and there's been no communication. It's been nothing. No, don't see that in the Bible. No, what I do see is Esther being introduced with other women. She got chose. Um, but before she got chose, there was a time of preparation, right? And then with Ruth um, being a widow, she met Boaz and she wanted Boaz. Um, but her mother-in-law had to tell her to take a step back. You wait. He'll make that decision. And that's what a lot of you all, the advice you need is chill out, wait. He'll make that decision. And it's not where you need to be like constantly 
focusing on, is this my husband? Is this my husband? Is this because you see where that led you all, where it led all of us to where we were sitting here waiting on somebody that was not it. I feel like when God says, this is it, this is who it's supposed to be. You use that time to find out who this person is. And when you get that push to go, you go. Not about to tell you all, yes, you just date and you do. I can't recommend that, right? I can't, but I can't tell you either that it will be within two, three months, right? All I can say is trust God. And that brings me to the scripture. So in Matthew 6, we'll start at verse 25. And this is the new King James Version. I really like reading in the King James Version, um, but I don't want some of the words to confuse you. So I'm going to read the new King James Version. So Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cupid to a stature? And that scripture right there that says, which of you, by worrying, can add one cupid to a stature? That's saying by worrying, you can add one day to your life. Worrying is absolutely pointless because that time you're not getting back. So why worry? If Jesus is talking about the birds and how God looks over them and he watches over them and we don't have to worry about what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink. And aren't we more valuable than the birds if he takes care of them and feeds them to make sure they're good? Are we not of more value? And so it just comes back to this scripture, which is stop worrying. When we start thinking of all the interest intricacies about marriage, well, if I meet them, then what am I supposed to do? Well, how long do it supposed to take? Well, should I go ahead and marry him now or should I not? Or should we go ahead and do this or should I, not? should I, it gets to be overwhelming. You're worrying when none of us really have the exact answer, but God. And so if God's the only one that has the answer, he already sees the end from the beginning. I'm just going to go with him. I'm going to just pray and repeatedly ask for his will to be done. And if I do that and I stay in, and I stay in alignment and I follow him and I'm following his law, statutes and commandments, which they're not done away with. So don't let nobody tell you, because then another scripture talks about if anybody that tells you to obey the least of these commandments will be the least in the kingdom. So just remember that. Talk about that in another um, story. But we have to be following the word. We cannot not follow the word and then expect that we're going to hear God clearly and that he's going to have our back and lead us like no it doesn't work like that if we want to be in the will of God if we want the will of God to happen we need to be walking in the will of God so we can't do what we want and then say Lord let your will be done it's just not going to happen like that no he's merciful He's gracious. And so we thank him for constantly inviting us back and welcoming us back. But we have to be realistic. We have to, if we want the will of God, we have to be seeking the will of God. We have to walk in the will of God. And so if God's saying, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. And the birds, they don't, they don't, they neither sow nor reap. God makes sure they're fed. And we know we're more valuable than the sparrow, than the birds. Then why are we sitting here worrying about who we're going to marry, when we're going to marry? Because truth is, if God wants you married, it will happen. It will happen. So just continue to seek God. So I'm going to continue reading. Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? 
O ye of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So us worrying about when I'm going to get married, this, this, or that. Is this a counterfeit? Am I on the deception? This, this, and that. It's like too much. Just don't worry about it. Just focus on today that I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. And then tomorrow I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. Then the next day I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. All the other things will be added. The Lord knows what you need. He knows that we're going to be entering the end time and women need men. We need protection. So he got you. Whether it happened now or whether it happened towards the end time. Or rather, it don't happen. He got you. He knows what you need more than you know yourself. A lot of you feel like you need marriage. Thing is, you don't. You just want marriage. And then you're going to get in marriage. And when you see how selfless you have to be, marriage is supposed to be a representation of Christ's love for the church. So if it's a rep representation of Christ's love for us, and we think about how messed up we are and how constantly God has to forgive us and um, run. He runs after us and then we go astray and then he still leads us back. And then we do what we want. And then we ask for forgiveness yet to sin again. And we do it over and over. And then that's how marriage is. And you're supposed to sit here and have that same gracious heart and spirit like God. A lot of people could not handle that. I have to sit here and continually forgive my husband. My husband has to continually forgive me when I fall short, because if I fall short to God's standard, I know I'm going to fall short according to within this marriage. So a lot of us, we we're just not built or equipped. And I'm not saying you never will. But just the truth is, a lot of a lot of people are not really ready for what what marriage entails, because we're thinking, oh, it's God and it's good. But when it's God, but then you have the trials and the tribulation and when it's not looking like what you thought God would look like. Because if you see God use all these different um, individuals and we might think, oh, God used them. They're going to be these mighty, great men and women and just righteous. And you look at them and you see they were not. And so now think about a marriage that God joined together. If the people that God used in the Bible don't even look like the standard of good, we think, just think about marriages. So a lot of us, we will see those shortcomings in marriage and those mistakes in marriage. And we will run and we'll say, oh, this is not God. I don't have time for that. And we will constantly be running or we'll, be, we'll grow bitter or we'll start resenting God. The truth is, we just had a misrepresentation of what something that's God looks like so this title again is distractions the distraction of marriage is because a lot of us in our single season was distracted by marriage and then that rolls over into being married and being distracted by marriage that you can't even do what you're supposed to do and you're not even living out the will of God for your marriage and so that's where I know we have fallen short and I'm trying to shift to get back on point, right? Because I am so, I've been so laser focused on making sure my marriage is right. Making sure we're doing this, seeing if my husband is proven in this area, seeing if, you know, I'm improving in this area where well, I'm so focused on my husband. I'm so focused on this marriage. I'm so focused on our future, the family, everything that I can't even find where the fruit is of this marriage right now. And I'm just being honest and transparent. And that's something that God has been putting on my heart and is weighing heavily on me that my main goal of getting married was I wanted a marriage, kingdom marriage to live out the kingdom agenda so that we can prepare people for the coming kingdom. 
So I'm just thinking, who am I pushing towards Christ? Who am I helping? You know, and so that's something that I feel like I've been distracted from. And I understand. And um, is it Second Corinthians? Can't remember it's first or second Corinthians. But Apostle Paul, he talks about, look, I'd rather you be single because in marriage you have the distractions of the things of marriage. You're not only focused on the things of the Lord, you're focused on the things of your marriage. Opposed to when you're single, you can just focus solely on God, the things of the kingdom. But when you're married, it's another component. It's another person in there. It's not just you and God. You know, like I do miss that time when I was in my single season where it was just me and God. Just like he, he got me. Now it's a third party. And you get to where it's not just you and God. And, it, and God is not the center or the head. You get into where you're so focused on getting your marriage to the point to where you feel like it should look. And that's distracting. That's distracting. And so that was the purpose of this video. It's just to give you all pretty much a little insight on how marriage can definitely be a distraction, whether you're single or married. But you cannot let it distract you from the kingdom. The kingdom purpose, you know, if God um, joins you with someone, it's for a reason, a purpose. It's not so you can just have a companion. It's not like it's a reason. And what is the worst thing I think about is getting married. You waited, you had this vision and then you don't live out that kingdom purpose. You do all this purpose and everything before you get married, and then you get married and you're stagnant. You you do you're doing nothing. You're not going anywhere. You're not bearing fruit. You bear more fruit in your single season than you're married. And so that's something that a lot of you all need to be mindful of. Right now, you're single. You have no excuse. No excuse. Your focus is you and God. Like you got it. Don't lose that, because when you get married, it's not going to be as easy as you think. You think, oh. It's always going to be me and God. I would never let anybody come in between. Not, none of that will happen. Yeah, that's what you say until things don't go as planned. Until you realize that your husband is not you. He's not. I remember Jerry Flowers said this in a sermon. Um, he said, what happens with relationships is we go into it already with a script. And we want to give the person the script and we want them to follow the lines we gave them. That's how we do it. So we come into these unions with how it should go. Right. And it's not saying that how you feel it should go is wrong. It could be right. It could be good, but it doesn't mean it's going to go that way. And it doesn't mean if it doesn't go the way that you anticipate it to go, that you need to throw away your marriage. That doesn't mean that. But just stay focused. I mean, if you stay true to Matthew 633 and you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then you trust all the other things that we added, he knows what you need. If we don't have to worry about what we're going to eat or drink because he knows what we need. Why should we have to worry about this man? Why should we have to worry about this marriage? Why should we have to worry about this stuff? No, we're just going to follow God and we're going to continue seeking to be Christ like. I had to take a step back and look and ask myself. Do I look like Christ? Have I been looking like Christ? Be excuse me, because it's so easy when you're single. I'm not going to say it's so easy, but I feel like it's easier compared to being married. When you can exemplify Christ, you can look like it. You can behave because you don't have someone that's so close to you that can pull out of you. Things that you don't even know you had in you, right? It it gets hard in marriage. That's why I thank God for the period of my wilderness, my singleness, where I was just growing to know him, reading my word, because I have those scriptures with me that will never leave me. They're implanted in my heart, and I know 
where to go because when the enemy comes to you and he implants these thoughts or different things we don't have time always to sit here and like oh let me google what to do when the enemy puts this in your no you already need to know oh well i know in psalms 37 it says i have been young and old and i have never seen the righteous forsaken nor the descendants begging for bread, beg, begging for bread. So that makes me know that even times where I don't feel like being righteous or I don't feel like acting or responding Christ-like, when I act righteous, that's not forsaken. That's not ignored. That's not forgotten. God is going to see that. He rewards those things. And so just remain diligent. Seek God. Like, seriously, just forget about marriage, forget about the man, forget about the woman, forget all, forget about all of that and focus on God. Just have tunnel vision, God. Like, seriously, live, sleep, think, eat, God. And how do you do that? It's the word. Because a lot of people think, yeah, I'm, I'm running after God, I got this relationship with God, and they don't read their Bible. And I have had those periods of times Recently, well, I'm like, I have not read the word. I have not read the word. And I feel when I haven't read the word because it's like I don't feel as close to God. But in order to live out his word, you have to know his word. How can you walk in his will, walk in alignment if you don't know what it is? He's not going to whisper things in your ear. Maybe sometimes that will happen. But his word is his word. It never changes. It's not... This is the new upgraded 2024 version. No, it's the same. And some translations are not all the way accurate. That's why we have to continue testing the spirit and asking the Lord um, for wisdom. Um, so, again, I am going to make it my, my mission to make sure that I am doing what I can do. And if reaching people is through YouTube, then that's just what I'm going to have to do. I am going through the book of Proverbs. I'm almost done. I probably have about eight more chapters. Once I finish Proverbs, I'm going to start over and I'm going to do a lesson study on the book of Proverbs. So everything that I have highlighted, scriptures, I'm going to come on. I know on the Sabbath, which is Saturday, it starts Friday sundown through Saturday sundown. That's considered the Sabbath day, the Sabbath. I know I'm going to have a Sabbath teaching and it might be live. I don't know. Or I might have like a Q&A afterwards, but I know I'm going to be on the Sabbath. Um, but I also want to do like a midweek. So it will probably be Wednesday and Saturday. Not 100 percent sure on the day of the week. But on Saturday, will definitely be on Saturday. And I'm going to try my best to start that this Saturday. Um, and I might just record a bunch of them and then do premieres. Um, but I'm really just trying to hold myself accountable and just make sure I'm doing something. Because honestly, I feel like I haven't been doing nothing. Like seriously, I feel like I haven't been doing anything. Um, and I just want to make sure that I bear fruit uh, individually myself. I want this marriage to bear fruit, but I need to make sure that I'm bearing fruit like I was before. And I'm not letting the distractions of marriage or life or anything stop me from doing what God has called me to do. So I love you all. If you have questions, comments, drop them. Oh, I want to touch on the comment right fast. I had a comment and this person, I'm starting to think he's trolling. He has left this same comment on multiple videos and I already responded to him but he asked like hey can you have your husband um you know do a video with your husband and that was the plan months ago like we almost are at our one year anniversary June 30th will be our one year anniversary but that was the plan but my husband is so anti getting on video so anti pictures so anti like being in front of the scene that that has been hard. Um, we, we talked about it. He said he will. Um, he's just not there yet. I'm thinking we'll probably do a voiceover um, 
And so it'll probably just be, you know, where you hear the voice. Uh, but I do really want you all to be able to hear his perspective, just kind of where he was leading up to now, um, his progress, because from the beginning, you know, from when we met to when we got married to now, like it has been a lot of progress. Like he will tell you, well, I don't know if he'll tell you his self, but just being transparent, um, he was definitely not prepared for marriage. He wanted marriage. He was not prepared. And so just to see what God can do in prayer, um, fasting, and just having a person that's willing, that has a heart for God, even though they might not be where they really should be, but their desire for God their heart for God. That's a big difference because it can be somebody. And again, I don't want to say, yes, you marry somebody based off of potential. Instead of potential, it's just pretty much, I need to see you really are about God. I need to see, yeah, you might not be where you need to be, but you're trying to get there. And you know the tools to get there. You know you can't do it by yourself. And so seeing the progression of him has been a a breath of fresh air, seriously, because it makes me feel reassured that I um, made the right decision, right? And although it did not look how I thought it should look, I can see it growing, right? And developing and moving towards that way. And so I'm like, if we have made this much progress in a, a year, and again, my husband is younger than me. My husband is 28. And with that comes, seriously, immaturity. And so I'm like, man, if we learned, made this much progress, I'm just thinking about where we're going. And I'm like, okay, but we can only, only can do it with God. Um, and so I am going to try to get him in the video. Um, I'm going to try. That's all I can say. But if he doesn't want to and that's not his thing, I can't force us to be that couple that, oh, we do YouTube videos. I can't force us to be that. Like the stuff he likes to talk about is when it comes to like um, pretty much um, it's just like a, a, a area that's in the Bible and we actually have that same name that's um, a location here in Dallas. Um, And so that area he's very passionate about, um, nature growing, preparing for end times, prophecy, that type of stuff, which I'm also into that type of stuff too. I'm just not ready to introduce that to my page yet, but I'm highly into end time prophecy. That's really what pretty much brought us together, end time prophecy and who we are. Um, And so slowly I will introduce that into my content. But again, leave comments. Feel free to reach out to me. Again, Instagram is Girl Meets Kingdom underscore. If you haven't purchased my book, it's great. It's called Girl Meets Kingdom. You can go to my website, girlmeetskingdom.com. I have t shirts, they're very cute. Um, So support me. I thank you all um, and I appreciate you all. Have an amazing week.